Okay. Hello, welcome to this video. And um, so today I want to uh, look at the stock market um, as of today, June 2019. And uh, we're going to look at the volatility VIX index as well as the uh, now inverted yield curve. And yeah, we're going to all do this in R. So the packages that we will load first is, of course, the Tidyverse, uh, Tidyquant, which is a wrapper around a uh, quant mod package that is around for some time now, as well as Quandl for loading data. For Quandl, note that you will need an API key that you can get, uh, of course, from Quandl. You need to sign up, register, and if it loads here under account settings, you can get your API key, which you best load into the API key function. Um, so the stocks that I'm actually interested in is, is countries, is ETFs that are actually investable in. So we're going to use the SPI for the S&P 500, the triple Q for the NASDAQ. Um, I'm interested in Switzerland, uh, metals, Turkey, Mexico, China as well as Egypt that I've been following for quite some time now. And um, so the stock market data, um, of course, the easiest is to get it with TidyQuant um, from Yahoo Finance. And with the TidyQuant get function, maybe I can put this a bit larger, zoom in. Yes, that's better. And so that's what I have here. And I have my plot function. It is actually generating the plot that I showed you at the, well, at the beginning. And um, we see here since 2010, the performance of the S&P 500 S and SPI ETF uh, going up uh, almost 200%, uh, while others like say China here, um, GXC is up say around 50%. And of course, we also have some losers. We have silver, Turkey, Egypt, um which are considerably down for the past uh, nine years um i also like to draw in these events and uh, that i can do in in r with or in ggplot with the v line and annotate so we see here the greece downgrade on government bonds the china market crash uh in 2015 and most recently the U u.s market turned down as uh, september 2018 so let's have a closer look since 2018 and um, again here you have the performance i just filter it by 2018 um, and by the way for this code um i'll put a link in the description uh, where you can uh, get the whole code so no point of just for um writing off my video um, and you see again, you see the S&P 500 down um, slightly and the winner again, gold, uh, EWL, Switzerland, as well as silver. Um, now, the point of this video, looking at the uh, VIX index. Uh, if you don't know exactly, go on Wikipedia or on the CBOE um, for more information. Um, again, the VIX index can be downloaded with TidyQuant from Yahoo Finance. So that's what we do here. Um, normally, I like to save data that I downloaded um, into a RDS. So I can easily load it if I have no internet access, if I'm traveling, whatever. And here I have this nice plot, even with background colors per year, and that I generate with um, GM rectangles. And you see here in 2010, still the VIX was, was higher. I have here a smoothing line, a trend line. Um, we had VIX uh, values over 25 at several points. And now most recently in uh, beginning 2018 and then in the beginning 2019, we had considerably higher um, VIX values again. And also most recently, uh, the last one month, uh, spiking up to uh, just over 20. Um, of course, the VIX is an important indicator if you look at it in the long run. Uh, here we have data, we load data since 1990 and compare it to the, to the S&P 500 
the index this time because the ETF is not available for a longer term. And you see that during the market turn down uh, 2007, 2008, uh, well here, uh, we had considerably higher uh, VIX values. Note this is on a log scale. You can also move to log scale maybe. Um, here we have on a default scale and you see the the highest VIX values ever recorded in uh, 2009. Um, so VIX is being one indicator. A second one is of course the term structure of the interest rate or the yield curve. Uh, this we, the data of the term structure we can get from the US Treasury and uh, most easily downloaded from Quandle because you get tidy data which is what we like. Again, ideally save it and you need to do some uh, data gathering and as well as mutate the names so you can actually plot it on, a, on the x-axis. And here should show up the plot that I prepared. So, well, the scale is not very beautiful. Just round, maybe. Will this work? So round it on zero. Here it is. Now you see you you have on the x-axis the, the term of the government bond in uh, years. You see the zero, or actually the three months, um, treasuries. Uh, which currently have a yield of uh, just over uh, 230 basis points. Uh, the 10-year ten, ten uh, that is currently at 215 basis points. And this is what happens. This is what was in the news most recently, that the yield curve inverted. So you see you have here upward pointing yield curve and um, comparing the 10-year bonds with the three months treasuries and most recently in June and already basically in May uh, 2019 you have an inverted yield curve uh, that the short-term interest rates are higher than the 10-year the long-term interest rates and people like to look at the, at the yield curve and um, because it's a good indicator of possible recent recessions um, you see this, uh, there's an interesting Wikipedia article and of course also a lot of material uh, in, on other sources um, that it compares that there was um, the previous two recessions or market turndowns and there was an inverted yield curve observed. Yeah, so for this we will get again since 1990 the S&P 500 index data from Yahoo and um, we will calculate the term structure by, um, by subtracting at three months yield from the 10 years yield and um, save it at the yield curve we have here and um, over the date and, uh, and the delta and we also have this little function that makes uh, that indicates uh, the first time in a year that the yield curve dropped below zero or the term structure dropped below zero, 10 years minus three months. And let's plot this for observing. And you see here um, on the lower plot, you have the term structure of the yields. And uh, you see here in, uh, it's within nine, 1998, you just touched the the zero and again in which was um, before the, the internet bubble burst in 2000 uh, you had a small correction I believe in 99 this was Russia Russian crisis and in 2000 of course the, the internet bubble burst which again was indicated by uh, by the inverted yield curve and similarly in 2006 already and uh, we touched uh, the zero axis here, just barely touched, similar to what we have today. And later, of the year 2006, we went well below. But only one, uh, one year later, 
or one and a half year later, that we actually saw the, the massive um, correction in markets, the financial crisis. Um, so what is the situation today? We just barely touched um, the zero mark on the term structure. Um, what is next? Well, it could be an indicator, of course, of a of an upcoming reception or uh, or severe losses in markets. Let's see. Also, oh yes. So here we have the the S and P five hundred on a on a lock scale again, um, indicated with these uh, drop indicators. The first time of the year that the yield curve dropped below the term structure dropped below zero. We see here, um, just in uh, 90, well, was it 98? Yeah, end of 98, and um, in the year 2000, which was the internet bubble, uh, and 2006, one and a half year before um, the financial crisis. And what do we have here? Um, oh yes, so what I want, want also to indicate is um, that of course the situation um, is different each time. Um, back in the in the 1990s, we had um, interest rates well above five percent. You see here the the 10 years rates were at 7.5 um, percent on U.S. Treasuries, uh, and only most recently since the financial crisis, we had basically zero. Um, 0% interest rates on three months treasuries. And so always you see that when the, when the treasuries uh, three months go over the 10 years in terms of interest rate, we see a massive spike in the, in the interest of the, of the three months treasuries, which is again today the case. It's not so, so much the 10 years interest rates moving, but more the three months interest rates moving. Um, so it will be an interesting um, case to follow. Um, of course, the market uh, is always full of surprises. And this might be actually the first indicator of an upcoming recession. Uh, we will see. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Um, as said, the code is uh, in a link in the description. And goodbye.